James, Derby Days are always big, passionate occasions for, for fans and supporters who get thoroughly involved. Chen, would feel that way as well? Yeah, yeah, because I guess Chen are fans as well, so they feel the same, uh, the same emotional impact. And uh, I'm fortunate enough to chair the Royal Devon Exeter Hospital, which is probably the, uh, the biggest employer of Exeter City fans. So if, uh, if we're successful, uh, which I certainly hope to be, then I can go in with a high level of smugness. Uh, if we were to lose, then I uh, suffer the abuse from our staff there that, uh, 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 to, to, to celebrate Exeter's success. So, so yeah, it, it is, I mean, primarily for us as a football club, it's clearly about three points and it's about promotion this year. Um, but Derby Day is a very stressful occasion and uh, drives the emotional swings uh, one way or the other. As, as, as fans or as, as club, we can sort of ensconce ourselves in our little tribe, but unfortunately you had to rub shoulders with your counterparts. That actually must have been terrible last season, wasn't it? It was really, really tough. And uh, the, um, I mean, what, what happens, I tend to find colleagues come in with their extra city mics into my office and they don't say too much. Um, but there was, uh, given that we dominated the match and ended up losing, I guess it was particularly challenging for our girl fans and particularly... Uh, amusing for Exeter City fans, so I yeah, very much hope I can go in on Monday morning and I uh, hope there's a lot of very sheepish Exeter City fans. We haven't had to wait too long for the derby to come around, we, we, we're only eight or nine games into the season, but it's been a great start to the season, hasn't it, on and off the pitch? Yeah, I mean, it, it's been really extraordinary when, when you look at it, 16 out of 24 new players um, uh, being brought in and uh, players that typically haven't played together. Um, we obviously lost the first two league games, the first three competitive games, and have now won six on the bounce, which, uh, based on my maths, is uh, is the best achievement within a season we've achieved for, for 12 years. So it's, it, it's you know it's an incredibly positive performance. Um, I mean, clearly people raise the point that you know when you're at the top of the league, it's one directional. You either stay where you are or you go. You know, there's, there's a risk of, uh, of dropping places, you can't go up from top of the league, but it's a fabulous place to be and uh, as a club very excited about it. And, and I mean, the, the off the pitch as, as well, it's, uh, I think this is a turning point, it's the fifth anniversary in October of acquiring the club. We will have dealt with all of the legacy debt, about £5 million worth of debt that we inherited, um, some very onerous contracts. We had. Um, I, I couldn't understand it when I first came to the club. We had 36 very expensive first-team players, most of whom weren't playing for us. So I was trying to work that out. I still don't fully understand how that works. But uh, so we cleared out all of those legacy contracts, um, and it's you know from small acorns, big oaks grow. We're, we've started investing back in the club in terms of a new surface to the pitch, new training facilities. The, uh, the surface of the pitch and the training facilities were the most important two things for. Uh, for Derek, um, there's a huge amount more we need to do. I mean, the uh, the physical offer to um, to our fans, who are also customers, is not acceptable. I mean, our, our staff did a brilliant job in terms of looking after fans. I think within the the constraints of particularly the grandstand that we have, um, and we are starting to put these things these things right. And it does take time, and I I'm very very grateful to our supporters who've. Uh, you know, given us the time to get it right. And in, in between we've done some really, really great things. I mean, it, it, it is, it is um, we do need to focus on, you know, providing great uh, entertainment and fun to the existing fans, but we do need to bring in younger fans and we do need to uh, bring in more women. Um, it, it's a great sport, you know, if you look at what's happening in the United States, uh, uh, soccer, as they call it, is becoming incredibly popular, but it's being driven by the mums and uh, wanting their kids to play English football or soccer rather than American football. And, and there's a whole opportunity, I think, without losing the excitement we have in football games. I never want to see Plymouth Argyle like a rugby club, I never want to see uh, fans, our fans, sharing beers with opposition fans. I, 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 I love the idea of the tribalism that sits within that, but we need to make it a better environment for uh, young people and a better environment for women. And we are gradually improving that, which is great. It's important that the, the sort of off the field keeps track with on the field. On the field has been very successful the last two or three seasons, great progress, great strides. Won't mention women, of course, but I mean, we're on track again for the you know, promotion stakes. But it's very important that what happens off the field keeps track with, 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 with that, isn't it? Totally, totally agree. And, and, uh, 
you know, one of the reasons, probably the primary reason for the success on the pitch, um, I think, is we have a, a manager who is a perfectionist, who wants everything perfect, who plans everything to perfection. Um, and I think it's very fair comment that the, the achievements he's achieving on the pitch or ahead of where we need to be off the pitch. So there, there, there's some catch up there. And I mean, there's absolutely no criticism of the, the of Martin Stans or his team. They've had very, very limited resource and uh, management team here has done a really good job with the resource. But we can now push the resource back into the, um, into the infrastructure as well as into uh, the, the team. And as you say, bring the whole club up. I, I mean, this is, you know, I, I think we're probably one of the better run clubs in the Football League. Um, but, you know, that, that's just not acceptable because I don't think the Football League clubs are very well run. And I think we need to become exemplary. I mean, we need to be the platinum standard that our competitors aspire to get to. You mentioned the five year anniversary, if that's the right word, I'm not sure it is, but the, it's the five years since coming out of administration. One of the hot topics has been the grandstand in those five years, and there's been some news recently about what might or might not happen with the grandstand. Perhaps you could give us a little bit on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's two separate uh, separate things I think which can be conflated, and they're, they're, they're clearly linked. Uh, one is the ownership of the stadium um, as part of the bring the club out of uh, out of administration to pay back um, legacy debts. We put money into the club. And uh, we sold the um, the stadium to Plymouth City Council, and they've been great partners um, and rented it back from them. Um, but we've spent almost uh, coming up to pretty close to half of what we got back from the council in rent. It's it, you know it is very very expensive to the club, um, and that rent actually goes up under the terms of the deal. So every five years it goes up uh, between um, uh, ten and twenty uh, percent. Um, and that carries on for the next 25 years, so it, it, it's a very expensive arrangement for the club. And what we spend on rent, we can't spend on players, we can't put into training pitches, we can't. So um, the board has resolved and the investors still need to sign off on it, so it's not a done deal that uh, the board unanimously believes it's in, in, in the interests of Plymouth Argyle Football Club to own its own stadium and to um, uh, to uh, stop paying the rent that's otherwise. I mean, I mean the, the cost of buying back the stadium is 1.7 million. The lowest rent we'll pay over the next 20 years not to own our stadium is twice that, and more likely it's going to be three times the cost not to own our stadium as to the uh, the cost of buying it back. And the investors, in principle, um, myself and Simon Hallett and uh, and Tony Rathall, um, are in principle. Uh, willing to look at putting that in as equity, uh, so ordinary shares which are never repayable by the club ever. Um, and uh, we've said we don't want to get a dividend on that. So it, 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 it's sort of taking that part of the arrangement, it's, uh, I think it's a total no-brainer and I'm sure um, as we explain that better to fans we'll get 100% support uh, for that. Um, the second bit, which is which is related, which is uh, you're, you're absolutely right with the grandstand. I mean, the uh, the three um, uh, areas that I said I'm keen to focus on. You know, what uh, my custodianship would be, of the club would be about, would be to see us move back up the league. Um, which uh, we each year we've had progression. It hasn't been as fast as I would have liked, um, or as fast as I would have liked, but each year we're getting better. Um, uh, the second point was to sort out the finances. We paid off five million of external debt. Uh, we've dealt with all the legacy contracts, and we're starting to put investment back into the club. And the third part was the grandstand. And uh, at the moment, it is uh, I've clearly felt to deliver that, and very conscious uh, that that is part of the uh, the legacy. Um, I was fortunate enough to be invited last night up to the American ambassador's home with a number of other people from Plymouth. Um, uh, 2020 is a really important year for the city. Um, uh, Plymouth Argyle Home Park should be the centrepiece for the sporting and leisure activities of the city and we need to be bright and shiny in a very good place well before that date in my view. You mentioned that you know, nothing's happened in inverted commas on the grandstand, but that's not to say nothing's happening behind the scenes. I mean, we see it every day 
know, discussions yeah. going on, you know, everything happening. So it's, it's very much that you know, things are happening behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, um, once bitten, twice shy. I mean, we, we, we had plans that were uh, approved by the planning committee um, that were very well advanced. Uh, that cost about one and a half million pounds. We often the club, the club didn't put a penny into that, so uh, we didn't uh, utilise a penny of club's resources. But it cost us about one and a half million pounds to to produce uh, the plans and get them consented. Um, and then, uh, you know, that particular scheme can't go ahead uh, for reasons that are well documented. Um, so we are working very hard to uh, put Plan B in place. Uh, it does require cooperation from others. Uh, I'm hopeful, but until we have something which is uh, which is signed up and committed to, uh, I'm not going to make the same mistake by announcing something again. Um, uh, so, so yeah, I'm hope, very hopeful. Uh, you know, personally committed to it. Um, it's absolutely right for the club. It's absolutely right for the city, um, and uh, we need to. Uh, Move that forward. We need to move it forward because we've got a, a future here at Plymouth Argyle. We talk about our young players. We've seen Lewis Rooney playing for the Northern Ireland on the 21s recently. I know you're a great fan of the academy, and maybe something else we don't blow our own trumpet uh, enough about the community side of things here at Argyle. Yeah, I, 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 I think uh, I agree with that totally on on both counts. I mean, as far as the academy is concerned, and 100% aligned with the manager on this. Um, we are different to many other clubs, uh, and that's driven by size, and it's driven by ambition. And, and we are not um, in a sort of manufacturing process of taking kids in to, uh, to create a saleable product. That, that's not what we're about. Um, our primary focus for the academy needs to be produced to produce future pilgrims for the first team. Um, but it's great to see, Lewis, as you say, it's, it's wonderful to see Ben Parrington really, really sort of uh, making a mark there. Um, but 100% supportive of the gaffer that uh, our academy product needs to be good enough to enhance our first team. We must never get into a position that we see our first team as a, uh, as a way of showcasing our academy players to other uh, clubs, which is a model that others have. I'm totally respect to, you know, respectful of their model. I mean, I, I don't think... It would work for our goal. No interest in that, but you know, respectful of other people doing it. Uh, the um, our goal in the community is an absolute gem, uh, and, and I know that you and the team put a huge amount of effort into um, into uh, letting people know what we're doing. Uh, but it still doesn't have the glamour attached that uh, first team does. But the fact that we have more full time people focused on engagement, health and education of the of our young people in Plymouth and the surrounds and Plymouth City Council has in its public health, it's not, not precisely for the Plymouth City Council, but we have more people focused on on uh, on our young people in terms of engagement, health and uh, and uh, sort of education from a public health standpoint. So you know really really proud of that. Um, uh, and they go from strength to strength, and uh, you know they they are a core part of a community football club. And as 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 we've always said, I, I think some people have misinterpreted the fact that we talk about as being a community club as being a club um, which can excuse underperformance on the pitch by virtue that it's community. That's absolutely not the case. We expect this club to excel on the pitch, but also as a contributor to the community within which it uh, proudly exists. Rewind five years, did you think there was so much to running, owning, chairing football club as, as there is? I, I, mean, to, to, I, I clearly reflect on it and, and to be honest the, the, uh, the peaks are much higher and the troughs are much lower. Um, you, you know, at times it has been a massively stressful and given the size of the, of the uh, of the organisation, I mean, you know, two the other organisations I chair, one's half a billion pounds, five hundred million pounds turnover, um, and we are, uh, you know, six million pounds turnover. So it's a small organisation, but when things are tough, they're really, really tough because you you uh, you carry the burden of the impact of the club on some very, very loyal fans. When you go through a losing streak, 
you don't just feel bad because as a fan your team is losing, you feel bad uh, for the 8,000 people who turn up and watch that, for the 92,000 people who listen to it on the road, or whatever the number is. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and the highs are really the, the, the pride, and the outcome of Wembley was, was poor, but travelling up the M5 and the M4, seeing the blue motorways turn green, um, hearing about Paddington Station ringing to the uh, to our girl songs, as a very very proud moment, and, and, and Wembley was green for the day, the sort of central English football. So very very proud of the ups, um, really really enjoy them. The the, the good runs are great. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the 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 troughs can be challenging. How are you going to feel on Saturday? Do you think at five o'clock? Well, very much. Um, I mean, I guess it's at three o'clock. And uh, in terms of the, oh, sorry, uh, the, no. the, the outcome, yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, it will be that very extreme emotion. It'll either be um, coming out of uh, St. James's Park, um, enjoying not just our success, but frankly, our competitors losing against us, or it will be uh, a rather more challenging position. But. Uh, very, very much focused on the positive and uh, looking forward both to Saturday afternoon and to 8 o'clock on Monday morning when I go and see my colleagues. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you.